Thanks for checking out this video. Don't forget, like and subscribe. And then the main event was Swerve and Brian Danielson for the AW title. And Brian comes out to final countdown. The crowd's going absolutely nuts. And the family's at ringside. <laughs> the children. I don't want to laugh because the stuff with Brian and the children at the press conference, his daughter, was like the sweetest thing I've ever seen in my life. It was very cute. It was so awesome. Yeah. But he's he's cute. talking about it afterwards and he goes, I was doing this match and I kept looking over at him. And I I I had a lot of ketchup, he says, on my head. <laughs> and he goes, and I remember looking over and I saw my daughter and she had moved to the second row. And she had her head down, and she was crying. Well, I, 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 they, they showed, they showed shots of the kids not happy at, when, when he was selling. So he goes, I saw her. Her head down was crying. And I was thinking that Mick Foley's thing in the movie. Well, I'm thinking like, you know, he's thinking, okay, well, yeah, I got to wrap this career up. And then he goes, I just thanked whatever higher power there is for this line. <laughs> what? Well, you caused her to cry in the front row because you're bleeding everywhere. But you know and what? Your response was, "Thank you, God. No, I but, made her cry with this spot." But you know, you know what though? I mean, like. After that spot, when when you know they showed her and and she was upset and he was bleeding and everything, she was thrilled at the comeback. Yeah, he gave me the comeback. When he made the comeback and they showed her, she was. I mean, she loved this he match. He did point out that she was weeping and and uh, and traumatized. And meanwhile, his younger son was having the time of his life. Yeah, his dad's bleeding and having all this blood coming out of his head. So anyway, they do all the big spots at the end, and uh, Hangman did interfere, and he took out Nana. Swerve was distracted. Brian hit the knee. Swerve did kick out of that. And then well, the, 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 the thing is, the first time Brian hits the Busaiku knee, Swerve totally no sold. He no sold it the first. He time just time. like laughed it off. The second time, you know, he got a he got a near fall, and then at the end, like he, he did like a couple of them before he beat him. Yep, Swerve wouldn't quit off the yes lock, and so Brian finally snapped the fingers, put him in a stretch version of his submission. Swerve taps out. Place goes nuts. Brian okay. brings a kid into the ring. He does oh, what every wrestling father does, and he takes a little one and he spins him around and he's trying to have him do an Atlantida or whatever. Kid was having the time of his life. It was awesome. Place is going crazy. They got all the confetti. People are crying. It was great. Yeah, it was a really fantastic it was closing, awesome. closing scene. I awesome mean, match. Awesome moment. Both guys were great. Swerve apparently is re-signed. Swerve's re-signed. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And and uh, Daniel Garcia. Now, Tony Khan would not confirm Daniel Garcia re-signed. That's I, I don't know if he's re-signed. Yeah. No, I don't his think, contract I don't, hasn't expired. I don't yet. I don't think he I don't think he has. Yes. Yeah, the way cuz the way he phrased it it was almost like, well, is he re-signed? And it's like and he starts doing this thing about, well, Sting had 3 years, Danielson had 3 years, you know, Garcia's had 5 years, and it's almost like uh, I don't know. Well, this was a couple of weeks ago, but I mean, I mean, I, been, I, I know I, people that think he is going to resign. No, I had been told all along yeah. he was going to resign. But he hasn't until he does. He hasn't. Yeah, so, I, been, I, I mean, he I, can do he can do that one match with Swerve if he needs to. Or I'm sorry, with, with, uh, MJF. with MJF. And, well, they're going to do the match. Yeah, I mean, he'll probably lose one way or the other. Who's I, mean, I, I guess he could probably beat Max. It doesn't matter. But you know, if he's leaving, he's going to lose. Yeah. If he's staying, who knows? He's maybe still, he'll win. He, yeah, maybe it's possible. So maybe. I, I thought the finish of the show was was really one of the better finishes of a show I've seen. Yeah, it was uh, really really spectacular. And um, you know when the when the whole match when the first when the match was first announced, I know people wanted Hangman. And I know people I I wanted Will Ospreay. But when it, when I figured out what they were doing, it was like well you got to do it because like there you know the the finish of the show if it had been Hangman it wouldn't have been one tenth as good. The finish of the show would have been Will Ospreay and he won the title. It would have been good. It would have been really great. But we sort of got that in the Max match. But they can still do that. And they can still do the Swerve and Hangman match, which obviously they're going to do. So it's like, but they could not do this ever again. This is the only chance to do it. Um, and this is the place to do it. You know, the place to do something. You know, Tony's idea was Sting's retirement here. Mm -hmm. And Sting just told him, like, I'm not going that long. You know, I mean. Um, then he was here. Yeah, but he didn't wrestle. He looked great, though. He did look good. Yeah. Yes. I mean, uh, you know, whatever he's doing, he's, you know, he, yeah, he, he, he's training hard, you know, um, and all that. His his son was here. Uh, so a couple of other notes from the show. Will Ospreay at the press conference said he wants to go to Mexico. Well, everybody does. But, yeah, they were talking about. Well, you say that, but he did not want to go to Mexico. 
earlier. Yes, he was. He was, he was afraid was of afraid it. Afraid of going to Mexico. Yeah, he was intimidated because of the style. Yes. Which is funny because it's his favorite style. I mean, I remember when when he first started, and people would, you know, it's so funny because with the, the the ricochet match obviously came up, and and somebody had asked about it, and then I asked about it as well. And he's talked about how polarizing it was. And the thing is, it was only polarizing to idiots that saw, like, a 20-second clip. Oh, the clip, yeah. The clip of the opening spot where they both did the the big flips, right? And so that was, like... Yeah, but you know what, Dave? These wrestlers, they go on Twitter, and to them... It ruins their lives. so many people. And I tell them over and over, get off Twitter. It ruins their lives. You know, it's... Anyway. Because, like, like Ricochet, you know, like... um, because, I mean, he's talking like this was this polarizing match. I'm like, dude, it's the match that made your freaking career. Like, that's the one where he went from, oh, yeah, you know, one of these guys. And, and it was just like these guys are space age guys. And it led to them doing matches everywhere. And, um, you know, yeah, I mean, it was like a, it was a big turning point for him. Um, the thing, too, about going to Arena Mexico is I remember this from many years ago because I once asked, I know people don't like to hear the name, but Chris Benoit. Because he'd worked all over, mm. and I said, "Man, you know, you you but worked you worked in America, you worked in Japan. Like, how did you how did you work lucha and do?" And he goes, "I didn't do lucha. He didn't I do just lucha. went down there and I did what I do." Yeah, yeah. And that's the thing. Like, you don't need to do lucha in Arena Mexico. Most most Americans that I have seen go to Mexico just do the same thing they do in the yeah, United States. It's not like MJF was down there doing, you know. A full on no no MJF did a Mexico lucha match. No no MJF did an American match. Yes. Or 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 it was a mixture match. But sure. he, he MJF did basically the exact match I expected him when he, to do with when he when he went down there with um, Templario. The point is Osprey should not be intimidated to work a match in Arena Mexico. Well, he I think be, it would be okay. No, but the thing is, number one, he shouldn't be intimidated to work a match anywhere. But the other thing is, is that when he when he started, okay, and he did a lot of the flying and everything like that, I remember, you know, he trained in Lucha Libre mm-hmm. in, in England. And I remember, like, people, when they would knock him, they would go, oh, you know, you're doing all this flying and you're doing all this Lucha Libre. You know, why don't, you know, you can't wrestle. And, and I remember him saying, he goes, I can wrestle. And, I mean, he showed, like, when he wrestled Zach. Or if he's in a spot where he has to wrestle, he can wrestle. And wrestle with the best of them. He goes, I can wrestle. He goes, but my favorite style is Lucha Libre. So that's why he did what he did. So it's kind of like, you know, that's your favorite style. But whatever. Um, the fact that everybody that goes there now, it's a new era. You know, they sold out on, fri- on Friday, again, 16,000 people, 15,000, whatever the place holds. Um, and everyone comes back and just talks about what a great time it is and awesome crowd and blah, blah, blah. And, and yeah, he can't wait to go. And a lot of people can't wait to go. It was, I think that... Um, I think Danielson kind of opened the door. You know, before, um, you know, it wasn't something, because, look, the money's, not, like, from a financial standpoint, if you just talk about financial standpoint, it makes no sense for any AEW guy to work Arena Mexico. I mean, you know, you don't make anywhere near the money. Um, I remember with um, when Penta and Phoenix went, and certain people were very in the business were very critical of them for doing that shot at Arena Mexico because it was like they you know they could have made more money in AAA but they wanted to work you know and it was kind of a slap in the face to AAA because they wanted to work Arena Mexico be, before they left it's like just something that with them growing up you know and selling masks in front of the building and everything like that it, when they were little kids it's something that they want to do but it's, it's like this bucket list thing i mean you know um um, Will Osprey talked about how there's only a few people who have ever done. To- like the big thing now is Wembley Stadium, Tokyo Dome, Arena Mexico, and Madison Square Garden. And you know he has not done Arena Mexico. And there's, they mentioned a couple people. There's there's still the, the, the um, you know they mentioned John Tenta and Brian Danielson and um, Earthquake. Jo- yeah, Earth. Well, John Tenta. Yeah. Yes. And um, they didn't mention Okada and they didn't mention Juice Robinson, but they mentioned. Um, um, you know, the, there's only a handful of people, and he wanted to be, he wanted to be on that list of people who have worked in all those buildings. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do: Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today, and don't miss out.